Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Gio, and for those of you who are new to my channel, my hobby is writing gay romance fiction. That is, fiction involving men discovering love with other men. The Dark is one of my longer works. This novel is an experiment into science fiction with gay characters. There wasn't a lot of gay science fiction when I was growing up. There wasn't a lot of gay fiction at all. What has gone before? The Nuestra Mining Colony is a long ways from Earth, and it is 300 years from now. The traitors have been discovered. Perlita and Tristan have been secretly working with the raiders, and worse, they have subverted Madre, the colony's AI, into hiding what they've been doing. In being discovered, they wiped huge sections of the memory of the Madre AI, thus crippling it and erasing what they have done. Rius is rushed to medical to restore the fragile nanite colonies in his bones, keeping him alive. Ian and Rius know peace for a couple of hours. Even though there are raiders in the system, Ian is called back to Shuttle 2 for another mission, leaving Rius alone. For those of you who are interested, I have a section at the end of the video about the jump gates and space travel in this universe. See below for the timestamp. And now, Chapter 18 of The Dark. Shuttle 2, the MRD-1 system on the way to the Smiling Mines. Ian. I hated leaving Rias, but I had no choice. Gutierrez and I took turns piloting Shuttle 2. When it was Gutierrez's turn, I was under the console upgrading the sensor system. Even without Madre, the AI in the shuttle still worked, and once we synced our data pads to it, our data pads worked again. We didn't have access to the vast data storage and information inside Madre, but I don't think anybody wanted to right now. Are you sure this will work? Gutierrez said. According to Rios, it will, I said. We feed the sensor data directly to the AI in my arm. It processes it, cleans it up, and directs it to my data pad. Maybe the extra AI can tweak the sensors and get a little more range. Our very own dual AI processor. Your arm is an enhanced data pad, Gutierrez said. No wonder Rias didn't tell anyone. Does this mean that your arm and Shuttle 2 can gossip about us and we'd never know? Thanks to Rias. But my arm and the data pad must be within a meter of each other to interact, I said and reached up to the control board to adjust power feeds to the sensors. How many daggers do you think are following us? Enough to give Karina nightmares, Gutierrez said. She begged me not to leave. When she do? I asked, toning the power feed down 5%. Doc says eight weeks, but he also says your first kid is never on time. In fact, none of them are, Gutierrez said, tapping a couple of buttons and adjusting the course a little. What's Elias doing? I asked. Sleeping. He won't have anything to do until he gets to the mines, Gutierrez said. How bad is his patient? You heard the message. Mining accident with multiple injured. One woman hasn't regained consciousness, Gutierrez said. Why did it have to be smiling? We just got back from there. Do you think it has something to do with the raiders? I asked. If not, it's one big coincidence. Let's just get this over with fast, he said. Three people and an unarmed shuttle against a dozen daggers. I have to agree with Karina about this, I said. You heard Emilio. He wants all personnel back on Nuestra. It's too risky to be out here alone. If the raiders shoot one of the shuttles, those poor people are stranded out there, Gutierrez said. What neither of us said and made the trip longer, we were also making a big detour a flyby over the area most likely to have the drone. But we would do that after we picked up the miners. The uncorrupted logs and sensor information of the Adi Shachar were on that drone. 
Somewhere in that information was the reason Perlita ordered our deaths. Perlita wasn't talking, or when she did, it was, get me legal counsel. That meant a cargo hauler, probably the Orion's belt, since it was the only one left out here, would have to deliver a message to Campbell Station, and a corporate lawyer would have to travel to Nuestra. That would take some time. Shuttle 2, do you have flight plans for the Orion's belt? Affirmative, Shuttle 2 said. Where would Orion's belt be right now? I asked. In jump space, approaching Taylor Station, Shuttle 2 said. From Taylor Station to SRK-12 to Nuestra, then to Campbell, then back to Nuestra? Do you know how long that would take? Gutierrez said. Yep, I do. I've flown that route many times. Roldan was right. It's a delaying tactic, I muttered. One that might backfire if we can find the drone, Gutierrez said. As of the moment we left, trams and communications and sensors still hadn't been restored. Atmospherics and hydroponics and sewage had to be operated manually again. We weren't the only shuttle flying right now. Shuttle 1 was heading to the Corona Mines to pick up the miners there. In a few days, everybody would be safe at Nuestra. But would Nuestra be safe? All it would take was five missiles, one for each dome. When a dome is vacked, anybody not in a shelter died. Rius wasn't in any condition to get to a shelter in time. He'd be one of the first to die. I stopped working on the sensors. Why did I leave Rius alone? If something happened to him... I closed my eyes and pushed past the fear. I've installed the module Rius made to the sensors. Arm, do you have contact with my data pad? I said, sliding out from under the console. A surge of sadness came through me. Rius should be doing this not me. I should never have left him alone. We'd never been separated for a week before. We had no communications. I had no way of tracking his condition. Who would make sure he got to medical or something to eat? Who would go to salvage for him? What if he died while I was away? When this mission was done, no matter what Emilio said, I'd stay with Rias, or I'd mourn at his cremation marker. Rius, his dad, his mom, and Robinson could all play cards together throughout eternity. I'd make sure his tools were there so he could build something. If Rius died, in a way it was my fault. I had piloted and crashed the Adi Shachar, and that had fatally exposed him to the radiation even the nanites couldn't fix. What was I going to do? Chase my dreams? Or help Rius survive? Loving Rius had replaced my dreams. If Rius couldn't come with me, then I'd stay with Rius. Captain Rohan be damned. Some things were more important than seeing the stars. Rius was more important. Full communication established, my arm said through my data pad. Assume full control of the sensors. We need more range and clarity, I said. Understood. Analyzing, my data pad said. North Dome, Atmospherics, Rius. My lover was in space, and I couldn't help him. Doc wouldn't let me go with him, no matter how much I begged. Neither would Emilio. Neither would Ian. It was late day mode, and I had been at my workstation at Atmospherics the entire day. Just like in the Azul Mines, whatever needed fixing, they brought to me, and I would fix it. I had to do something because Ian and Gutierrez and Elias were flying blind and defenseless in a floating can with engines. I didn't believe in Emilio's higher power, but maybe he could say a prayer for Ian. It hurt not knowing what was happening to Ian. If the dagger attacked and killed him, I wouldn't know about it for weeks. Ian had to be all right. He had to. I put aside the processor and pulled up my new data pad. Too much of the old one was destroyed, so I had to do a complete rebuild. Three days since Ian had left. Three days since Madre was neutered. Perlita and Tristan are not very popular. Three days. 
of constant worry and ache. In spite of my condition, I couldn't sit still. In three days, I had built my new data pad and a replica of the Arisha char and had it sitting on my table. I hoped Robinson would like it because I planned to place it on his pedestal in the cremation gardens. I had also rebuilt ten processors, redesigned my new data pad twice, and was a consultant for Emilio and for the crew working on Madre. My new data pad had readouts of my condition, and my not sleeping and all the stress kept the nanites from functioning any more than 60%, and the number had dropped from 70% in just a few days. Between the pain and all my projects, I lost track of time. Day mode had shifted to night mode hours ago. Hey, Rafaela said, walking up with a plate of chicken enchiladas and another with chocolate chip cookies. Doc called. I guess I'm your new babysitter. You need to eat and sleep. What are you working on? My data pad, I said. It will have extended range and can tap into the comm network from anywhere. It will also have a specialized buffer so what happened before won't happen again. You're working too hard, she said. Doc wants me to get you to medical or home. I can't, I said. Ian's out there with those monsters. How can I sleep knowing that? You're going to pass out on your workbench and drool over everything. That can't be good for your data pad, she said. Or did you make it waterproof? Knowing you, you probably did. Eat something before I get Dalila to spoon feed you. I hadn't seen my sister for days not before Ian had left. Rafaela slid over the plate of cookies and enchiladas, and I took a cookie. Attention, Carla's voice boomed over the data pads and the speakers. Good news, bad news. The good news, North Dome smells almost as good as South Dome. Good job, Rias. Hector, you should take lessons. Madre is now partially back to normal. Communications are working again, but we never needed them around here anyway. You know how good our gossip is. Now the bad news, people. Trams are working, but ride them at your own risk. Madre does not have them fully coordinated. I'd bring a crash helmet just in case. The Madre team has found and removed the rogue AI Tristan attached to Madre, and they are slowly bringing the old girl back online. Keep your data usage light for a day. Except you, Rias. Emilia wanted me to tell you to make him one. And Doc said to remind you that you still owed him a shiny cart and he wants you back in medical at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, or he'll get mad at you. Again. CNC out. Did you cut Doc's card up, Rias? I can't believe you did that, she said, running a hand through her green hair. Actually, yes, I can. I pulled up my new data pad. It was shiny. The metal from the car was tough and lightweight. That was another thing I had lost on my data pad. My plans for Doc's cart... Could I sneak out to salvage and find some metal? First, you are going to stop working. Second, you are going to eat more than a cookie. Third, I am either taking you to medical or back to your apartment, she said, hands on hips and scowling, though her eyes smiled. I have too much to do, I said. Ian will never forgive me for letting you work so hard. Medical it is, she said, and pulled up her data pad. Madre will need a grav lift at this location for Ria's. Affirmative, Madre said. Give me thirty minutes to finish up and organize for tomorrow, I said. As soon as Rafaela left, I used my new data pad to call Emilio. Rios, how's the data pad? Emilio said. I'm doing a comm check by talking to you, but that's not why I called, I said, feeling the fool. But everybody thought I was crazy, so why not this? Can you do me a favor? Name it, Emilio said. Can you pray for Ian? I'm so scared for him. If something happened to him, I don't know what I'd do, I said, looking away from my godfather. Had I ever s asked something this stupid before? If it helped Ian get safely back, I'd do it again. I think my lips trembled, because Emilio smiled. I haven't stopped praying for either of you since the accident. Just so you understand, I wouldn't have sent Ian out if it hadn't been urgent. How are you holding up? You could never lie to me, so don't even try, Emilio said. It hurts. I can't stop worrying about Ian, I said. I'll be happier when he and Gutierrez and the miners are back, Emilio said.
Shuttle 2, en route to the Smiling Mines. Ian. Anything I can do? Elias said. I'm so bored back here. You might as well come on up and join the conversation between the four of us, Gutierrez said. I've never talked to an arm or a shuttle before, Elias said, and floated onto the shuttle command deck. Daddy Pad, I said. Have you made the modifications to the sensors? Affirmative, it said. Implement and put results on the main screen, I said. The screen flickered. Sensor range has increased by 20%, Shuttle 2 said. Alert. Incursion detected. Two targets, my data pad said. Where? Elias said, clutching the back of the pilot's chair. The screen highlighted two small images at extreme range. Are they daggers? Gutierrez said. Affirmative, my data pad said. Alert. Target lock acquired, Shuttle 2 said. Have they launched anything? I said. Unknown, Shuttle 2 said. Elias, you better go strap in and seal your suit, Gutierrez said. This could get bumpy, I said. My hand automatically went to my CSM. Rhea still had it. There was no one to bring me home. Alert, two missiles fired, one from each target, my data pad said. AI enhanced or dumb missiles, I asked. AI enhanced, and they are locked in our position, my data pad said. I took my seat and strapped in. Data pad, take over communications. I want everybody to hear this. Ready, it said. I yelled into the comm. Dagger XFs, this is Shuttle 2. We are unarmed and on a medical mission. Your missile attack is an act of cowardice and an act of murder. Nuestra is already aware of your presence, and your conspirators in Nuestra are captured. Your attack means you are declaring war with the Bentleythwaite Corporation. Stop your attack now. You realize that they now know we can detect them at that range, Gutierrez said. Why are they attacking? Eliminate witnesses, I said. Datapad, broadcast logs and distress on all frequencies in all directions. I don't want anybody to be able to block or erase this. I had an idea. Rias would approve. So I do this for Rias. The only problem was that his overpowered data pad was destroyed. I had an arm and a shuttle acting together as a weird data pad. Could it equal Rias's old dual AI processor? We were dead if we did nothing. We were dead if this failed. I might as well attempt the crazy. Gutierrez, relinquish controls to me and take a seat because we are going for a ride. Shuttle 2, realign course and head straight for the Raiders. Datapad, give me specs on those missiles, especially on their AIs. Are you insane? What are you doing? We're unarmed, Gutierrez yelled. I know. So do they. If they had met my boyfriend, they'd be running away scared, I said. Thank you for listening, friends. For those of you who want to know a little bit about the tech in this story, let me explain a little about space travel. Nothing can break the speed of light, but there are ways to cheat around it. Those are the jump gates. Most ships can never leave a system. They don't have the power or range or speed. Those are designated short range. The long range exploration vessels, like the LREV Zheng He or the LREV Joya de Vida, can leave a system. They are generation ships, but as fast as they are, it still takes five years to travel one light year. Most jump gates are four or five light years apart, which means it takes the Zheng He 20 to 25 years to get to a new system and set up a jump gate. Once a jump gate is set up, specialized vessels, like the cargo haulers and couriers and carriers, can use a gate to travel to the next gate in line in a matter of days. There are 13 jump gates in the Bentleythwaite arm. Think of it as a string of 13 pearls. You can travel from Pearl 1 to Pearl 2 to Pearl 3, etc. But you can't skip pearls. You always have to travel them in order. There are a few laws agreed upon by all the corporations. One of them is, Thou shalt not destroy a jump gate. To set up another one would take another 20 to 25 years and any colony or station on the wrong side of the destroyed jump gate would be off the trade loop for a long time. You can imagine the consequences. 
If you have any questions about Nuestra and its universe, or you would like to learn a little bit more about its tech, leave me a comment below, and I will try and address it in the next session. We'll see you in a week. Peace.